This LED is flashing using no battery, no solar, just ambient energy. And that. Welcome back to this series of energy harvesting experiments. As a quick catch up in case you haven't seen any of the videos so far, my aim has been to explore the collecting of normal everyday mains emissions. I've put paper on the table both to make it easier to see what I'm doing and to show that it's not the contact with the table itself that makes these circuits work. Mind you, it is wood, so it's not even a metal table. Here's the base circuit so you can copy it at home if you like. Also, here's another harvesting circuit, a more traditional energy harvester. Along the way I've used smaller and smaller grounding connections, such as this drinks can, a piece of copper, aluminium foil and the coil from a relay. Well, Recently I've managed to get several circuits running from the same source, as in a small copper plate on the table of each one and something like a piece of folded up kitchen aluminium foil sitting on the floor. These run on their own 24-7, all the time, as long as there's power to the house. You can see here, we've got this one flashing away, nice and quickly, from the blue. And from the red one, we're also flashing, there we go. Also, by touching such a circuit instead, there's been no ground needed at all. Except, of course, I'm the ground by touching the circuit. Now that led on to getting this robot guy here to flash his eyes with no batteries or solar or anything else. One main goal is to get that robot to flash his eyes without touching it, not connected to anything and that's where I'm trying to get to. There's been a great suggestion from Hidnik3327 who says try sticking a nail in the plant pot and attaching the lower wire to it. As with all circuits, it runs off a potential difference. That is why the lower side usually goes to ground and the upper end is elevated. It's great to see you testing again. Well, thank you very much. Now those plant pots you mentioned, and sorry for the lower light at the moment, are these on the floor. And these are bonsai type trees that are brought in for wintering. There's also a pineapple over there. So that's what he's referring to. Oh, and the white in there is from eggshells, crushed up eggshells. So, the thing is, put a nail in there, run the wire to these circuits, and hopefully they'll run. Well, guess what you've been watching so far? Exactly that. I'll get a light onto that plant pot and I'll show you. So there we are, a bit better lighting. And in front and to the right, you might be able to see something silvery. That's the, well, it's a, more like a screw sort of thing. But then there's a wire leading from it. And if you follow that wire up here, you end up to these two circuits, which I've been showing occasionally, and they are indeed flashing. So the pair of them are going quite nicely. And the pair of them are actually running because of these two coils here, which are each about 8 ohms. Such coils should be, I believe, between 7 and 10 ohms. And you know, I'm looking back at this pot with this wire and its screw type thing into the pot. What would happen if I just put the wire in there? Do you think it would still work? Let's have a look. Here is that screw bolt thing that I've now taken out of the pot. So that's to show you what was running it. Now I'll take that off. Okay, so there it is on the floor. Just plug in. <laughs> plug in. Okay. Put that in, keep the shot going. Does this actually work? Well, there's that circuit. Is it for, oh, hey up. Yes, yes it's working. Let's have a look at the other one. Oh, that one's not going now. And there's the reason why, the wire's snapped. Just give me a second, I'll come back. There we go, the wire is now reattached. The circuit is working, there's very good flash rate there. And indeed, the one at the back, that one's working as well. There we are. And just from the wire, going into the pot. That's tremendous. 
Now here's something I wanted to point out. It's 7.22 in the morning. It's 64 degrees Fahrenheit and 60% humidity in the room, or at least so this says. And it seems the humidity can be from 50 to 63. That doesn't matter, which is weird to me. It is the temperature being slightly lower than the normal room temperature. I might put the heater on, I probably won't. But the thing being, the rate is always quicker, first thing in the morning, then later on in the day when the room's warmer. So there's that one going very, very nicely. We have a look at the blue one. Again, a very, very nice rate. It's quicker than you'll have seen in other experiments and when I've shown these circuits. I thought that was really interesting. I expected the humidity to be the thing that would dictate. I'd like to know what you think. And finally for this video, Granted is an old man, I had a really good question. Have you tried those LED strings, or maybe just cut one off the string? They seem to have a very low power draw. And that's in reference to the lights that are put on a Christmas tree outside, at least what we use as a Christmas tree. And I put some LEDs onto a solar garden light, 60 of them. So running 60, and it ran all night on a 300mAh NICAD, yes, they are very efficient. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I think I'll take this blue one off here because the other one there is buried inside that coil. So what I'll do is I'll take one of the LEDs. This is the kind of string left you can get. Only a dollar twenty-five, And actually you get a 2AA holder in there as well for other projects. But I'll take an LED off there, put it on that circuit and see what it looks like. And the answer to that question is, not bad at all really. I mean the lighting is actually, believe it or not, a little bright in here. And that's flashing away. Not as good as the blue, but blues tend to hit the eye a little differently to whites. If for comparison, if we have a look at the red in this light, you can see, you know, it seems a lot dimmer. So that is actually doing alright indeed. And better than some um, SMD LEDs that are bought recently. So there we are, a couple of interesting experiments. Please do like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing. I'm trying to get monetized, so it does really help the channel. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.